Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is part 3 of the YOLO version 3 implementation. In this video, we will dive deeper in the outputs of our network and filter out the detections so that we only get the useful ones. So let's get started. So, so far we have initiated our webcam and we imported the coco names file so that we have a list of all the names then we also imported our configuration file which has the architecture and then the weights file which has all the weights and then we created our network and then we converted our image to blob format because that is the format that the network understands and then we found out all the layer names so that we can find uh, the names of our output layers and then we set uh, a forward pass to our network using this blob and we found the outputs from our network now we were getting uh, three different outputs because we have three different output layers and what we saw was that we were getting 300 by 85 then 1200 by 85 and then 4800 by 85 so what are these matrices so this 300 is basically the number of boxes so our first output layer produces 300 bounding boxes then the second one produces 1200 and then the third one produces 4800 but what is this value of 85 now if you want to store the information of a bounding box all we need are four values the x and y and then the width and the height sometimes we can also use the center position which is your center x and center y and then the width and height in any case we only need four values so the first four values are basically your uh, center x center y then the width and the height but what is the fifth value the fifth value is basically the confidence that there is an object present within this bounding box and the rest 80 values are basically predictions uh, probabilities of each of the class so let's say that our value number three uh, is giving 0 0.9 then we will check what is uh, the value three so if we go to our coco names so zero one two so this is our third element so the third element will be car so if it says 0 0.5 so we have a 50 percent chance that the object that is inside our box is a car so to better understand this here we have a table that represents what are the values inside our arrays so forget about the values at the top these are just the headings and here on the left hand side as well so the actual values are basically these so this is what we will get inside so the first element will be cx which is your center uh, x point and then we have cy which is y of your center point then we have the width and the height then the fourth element as i mentioned is the confidence of the object so here we have 0 0.93 confidence that there is an object in this box now what is that object we will look at here so from 5 till 79 we have a total of 80 different classes so here we have the probability of 0 0 and then you can see here for car we have 0 0.93 uh, probability so this means that our confidence level that there is a car present here is 0 0.93 and again because we have uh, th 300 outputs so we will have 300 uh, different rows so we will have from 0 to 299 now this is only for the one where we have 300 by 85 the other two output layers they will have uh, 1200 by 85 and the third one will have 4800 by 85 so what we can do is we can print this out so we can write here print outputs at zero so this is our first output and then we can just output the first element so that will be basically this one line that should have 85 values so if we run this actually okay let let it run or is it confusing 
so this is basically our uh, array so here this is the x value then the y value then we have the width and the height and this is the probability of an object inside and then uh, as you can see here we don't have any uh, object probability here so this box probably we will neglect later on so the same way we have how many do we have we have a total of we have a total of 300 plus 1200 plus 4800 boxes so we will go through each of these boxes and then we will see that whether the probability of an object is good enough for us or not if it's not we will neglect it if it is we will keep it in the new list and then we will plot all of these uh, then we will display all of these bounding boxes okay to do that we are going to uh, write down a new function by the name find objects so we will write here find objects and what do we need inside this we need the outputs and then we need the image so first we are going to find the the height and then the width and then the channels of our image because we will be using this later on so we will just write that and then we are going to declare three different lists in which we are going to store our values the first list will be basically bounding box so this bounding box will contain the value of x y width and height and then the second one will be class id and these will uh, this list will contain all the class ids and then we will have the confidence values so we will again create an empty list so whenever we find a good object detection we will put the value of that box in these uh, lists so then we are going to loop so we will say that for outputs in outputs because we have three outputs we will go to each output and uh, we will call each of the box so we will call each of the box as a detection so we will write here for detection in output so this detection is basically this one array so we will have a lot of these to loop through so the first thing we will do is uh, we want to find the the value of the highest probability so we want to neglect all these five values in the beginning and we want to find which of these classes has the highest probability so in order to do that we will first remove the first five elements so we will say scores is equals to detection we are going to remove the first five elements and then we are going to write class id is equals to numpy dot max we are going to find the index of our uh, max value and then we also want the max value as well because that is our confidence value so we will write here confidence is equal to scores and then we will write here class id so every time it runs it will try to find the maximum value uh, so it will find the index first so for example let's say this one is 20 so it will find the index then it will save the value of that confidence as well right now here all of them are zero but some of them for example will be 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 so in that case we will save it now the next part is filtering our objects so what we will do is we will uh, write that if our confidence level is greater than a confidence threshold so we will write here confidence threshold and we can go up and define this confidence threshold there so let's say this is 0 0.5 so if it's above 50 percent confident then we are going to save it as a good detection so once we do that we are going to save the width and the height 
and the x and the y the first thing that we will save so the width and the height so these are basically uh, element number uh, three and element number four so the width is element number uh, three which will be zero one two so we will write here uh, detection at number two now these values as you can see they are in decimal it's basically the percentage so we have to multiply it by our actual width and height of our image so that's why we uh, got this width and height over here let's say we have 0 0.1 we will multiply it by our width let's say that is 100 so we will get the value of 10 so 10 will be the pixel value not the percentage so we can multiply this with our width and then our detection at number three, we will multiply it with our height. So that will give us the pixel values. And then we want them, because they are pixel values, we want them as integers. We don't want them as uh, floating points. Then we will find the X and Y. Now, uh, as I've mentioned before, this is not the X and Y, the corner or the origin point. This is basically the center point. So we have to uh, divide the width by two and then subtract it from the width. And then we have to divide the height by two and then subtract it from this. So what we can say is that we can say that we will find the first element of our detection. Then we will multiply it by width so that we can get the pixel value. And after we multiply, we are going to subtract it uh, with width divided by 2 the width that we got here so let's put them in brackets so it's easier to see and again we are going to put them as integer so the same thing we will do again so this is element number 2 and then we will multiply it by the height and then we are going to uh, put a brackets and then we will write here minus the height divided by 2 and let's put an integer here as well let's remove these spaces okay so this will give us the width height and x and y so now what we can do is we can write here bounding box dot append and then we want to append x, y, then width and height. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we have to append the class ID. So the class IDs dot append. And we want to append the class ID. And uh, the class ID is here. And then we also want to append the confidence value. So conf confidence values dot append and we are going to append our value of confidence and we are going to make sure that it is a float okay so at this point we are pretty much done so if we run this actually if we print it out uh, let's say the bounding box let's print out the length of the bounding box and what we need to do is we need to just simply call this function which is find objects um, so let's call it here find objects and we have to send in the outputs and the image and this whole thing we can just comment out and let's run this and there you go so right now it's finding the bounding box and it's telling us that it has one object over here so this is it for today's video in the next part we will see how we can counter multiple detections of the same object and how we can place the final bounding boxes around our objects so if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.